Now, many people here in Revelation 19:17 are dumbfounded. They're confused. They think that this is our Father that's called together these birds of heaven to eat the flesh of kings and princes and nobles and all that stuff. I mean, not on your life. And I, I mean, I've never even needed biblical support for me to understand that. I just naturally understand that because I know the Father. I know Jesus Christ personally, not through a book, but I know him personally. I know his love. I know his mercy personally. It has nothing to do with, you know, all of this sacrifice and death. And we can see that clarified over and over and over again in the Bible, okay? So Revelation 19:17. I don't know why it puzzles people, why they can't see it, why they can't understand it. That this great God of the earth, which has called them together for this great supper, this great supper is the second cup. It is this coming false flag, this coming chaos and destruction that we're going to see, which is being shown to us in every which way that you can think of, and everybody is aware that it's about to happen. So it's not our Father that's calling these birds together for this great supper. And we see that further expressed in Isaiah 34, but for some people, they just can't get it. And Isaiah 34 describes them eventually at the end, after this destruction has taken place, that they are inheriting the world. And it's all of these birds from this great owl and even the dragon. And eventually we see here this vulture slash eagle. But what's important to keep in mind and how we're going to connect this further with this understanding that this is not our father. And that when Jesus Christ is returning from the east, as we saw Hosea clarify in the same breath, with these fruitful boughs, the Ephraimites, that were going to be corrected by this wind that comes from the east. It's all the same thing. Christ is telling you that he's not coming to destroy these Ephraimites. He's not coming to destroy anybody. He's coming to bring them all back under the fold. And that it's unfortunate that this world has fallen under deception and that these deceivers are even deceived themselves. So as we see here at Clarified, that it says... Underneath the shadow of the great owl, which is going to be in total the mystery religion influence as it's been influenced by the God of this earth, Inky Apollyon, that that is where these eagles plan to take up residence underneath this overpowering protective shadow of Inky. Okay, which is being termed as this great owl, which is really just a symbolism for this flow from these mystery religions of which he sponsors. So get that through your head that the eagles are taking residence underneath the shadow. It's the eagles clarified right there. Well, once you do that, we can further make sense of what chapter 13 of the book of Hosea is saying. We find out that Hosea says for us here that it's the son of God coming from the east, just like we saw in Matthew 24, which is going to correct these ones of this fruitful bow, even though they were fruitful. We know that's the Ephraimites from Genesis 42, verse 22, without a doubt. Now, what's interesting to see is now you're going to see the mercy of Jesus Christ be displayed, and it's going to be 100% contrary to what people try to believe. And even these Christians think that he's angry, judgmental, and wrathful, and he's coming to destroy. Wrong. He ain't coming to destroy. Not even the Ephraimites is he coming to destroy. He's coming, them, he's coming to gather them together from the fold of the deceiver and bring them all back into the family of the Father. Listen to verse 6 very closely. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is the fruit found. Listen to this. When Christ returns, just like we saw in verse 15, clarified by Matthew on this east wind, as you see for the fruitful bough, to correct the fruitful bough, he's going to gather them back from that shadow. They that dwell under his shadow. It's the very same shadow that we see right here portrayed in Isaiah 34 verse 15. The father is going to gather them together from dwelling underneath the shadow of the deceiver. He's not coming to destroy them.